Ross, the world is in an unprecedented situation with a pandemic in the form of the coronavirus and the Australian Grand Prix is now being cancelled. But can we take it back a week to when the freight left Europe? Why was the decision taken then to race in Australia? Well, I think you have to go back even further because, I mean, sea freight's leaving for Australia three or four weeks before the race. Um, but we were very keen to have the race. I mean, it's a very positive event here. It's a great start to the season. We wanted to kickstart the Formula 1 season. Um, great race, great fans, um, wonderful weekend, huge enthusiasm here. We have a big impact on the economy here and we have an impact on our economy. I mean, Formula 1 has to function. You know, we have to make it work. So we looked at the whole situation and when we decided to go ahead, it looked a bit different to how it looks now. And I think probably what's surprised everybody is the rapid expansion of this problem. Um, you know, the escalation of cases, certainly in countries like Italy, where you know, it's gone almost vertical in terms of no one, I think, could have expected or predicted that. You know, I spoke with... Um, Mattia Bonotto at Ferrari many times over the past few weeks. And you know, his, his mood changed in the last five, seven days with what he was seeing in Italy and what we had to look at in Italy. So we were kind of on this um, ship that had sailed and we were uh, optimistic that we could get through it and we could get Formula 1 started and we can have a great race and just bring a bit of relief in difficult times. Um, I think once we had the positive case here and once one team couldn't race because of that, then clearly we had a problem we had to address. There was a 12-hour gap between McLaren announcing their withdrawal from the race. And why did it take so long for any communication to come out? Consultation with um, consultation with the teams, consultation with the medical authorities, consultation with the FIA, consultation with the promoters here. I mean, I've been up all night. I think I had one hour of sleep last night, one hour and a shower and back to the circuit. So, you know, we've been working on this since, since it started. I mean, I was in a restaurant last night when I got the call uh, to say that we'd had a positive case. Steve was keeping me posted and we'd had six or seven clearances and then suddenly we had a positive case. So I had to come back. And that started, I guess, about nine o'clock last night, 9.30. Um, and we just had so many issues to work through. We had to get the teams together again, uh, hold a meeting. Uh, then that, it just all takes time. There's a lot of, you know, this is not a total autocracy in terms of you can't just make a decision. You've got so many factors to take into account. And I think we did a pretty good job of reaching the right conclusion with so many uh, parties, so many stakeholders involved. Um, you know, we're, talking to, we're talking to the FIA, which is in Europe, uh, European time. We had to get a hold of Jean Todd. Chase, unfortunately, was in the air. He was flying between Vietnam and here. So, so it, was a, it was a pretty stressful period and and i think considering we dealt with everything in 12 hours or so something that important was good how much could you prepare for every eventuality prior to arriving in australia we'd we'd mapped out with the health authorities here what would happen if we had one case five cases ten cases but of course what you never know with those cases is what the association is with the people around and having one case with 14 people having to go into isolation. You know, that just effectively knocked that team out of uh, operation. And that, uh, that's something you don't know. I mean, you know, if that one case um, could have been someone with a different profile, different responsibility, it wouldn't have impacted the team that much. So there's certain things which you can spend forever just predicting, but you never know what's going to happen. But certainly the procedures for if we had a case or we had a batch of cases that was all set out and it worked very well I mean in reality we found the case you know we found the person who was positive in the in the paddock um, and I think that's a credit to the authorities here that 
they were identified, they were tested, the procedures worked, but then we had to make a decision. Have you ever experienced anything like this in your career before? I don't think anyone's experienced this in their lives. Um, you know, we've all been through the, I've been through financial crises, I've been through dramas and, uh, but you know, this, the scale of this at the moment is, is um, it, it's massive. And you know, we, we're taking stock of the situation now with what we've learned from this weekend. And you know, we want to try and build the Form 1 season back up, but we've got to be re realistic about when that can start again, and that's what we're working on at the moment. Are we going to say, what is the domino effect of this decision? Um, well, there's the economics for the teams. I mean, you know, the teams survive on their, their uh, funding from races. Um, yeah, so this will have an impact on the team's budgets for the future. Um, so it'll have an impact on our economics as a company. So, you know, each race you lose, then it has an impact. So, um, but, you know, uh, we've, there's quite a strong resilience in Formula 1. I mean, we're used to, you know, fair degree cutting our cloth to suit. And uh, I think there's a fair resilience in Formula 1. And we've got plans to rebuild the season, trying to accommodate as many of the lost races, because I think people have to have to show some tolerance now in terms of how we build the season for the rest of the year. And I think the teams are in the right place to realize that's necessary.